What's going on, Poker Fam? We are back with another video. But first, make sure if you're new to the channel to subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. We will definitely make the channel grow as large as it can. I want to be able to do another giveaway again. So make sure that you are sharing this video if you can. But anyways, we are at MGM National Harbor buying it for $300, 100 big blinds per usual. So we get into a lot of interesting hands along with me having to make one of the toughest decisions I've ever had to make. So let's just see how we navigate through these situations and let's jump right to the hands. Okay, so in this first hand, we have a beautiful blind. We have ace four spades from the cutoff. I decided to raise it up to $15 and we get the button, big blind, and under the gun limper to call. So we're going four ways to a flop, which is a seven queen with two hearts. So being that there's a flush draw board and I do have top pair, although my kicker is not that great, I do decide to bet out for $20. And I get the button to call, big blind fold, and the under the gun player decide to call as well. So now we're going three ways to a turn, which is not a good one. It is the five of heart bringing in the flush. And it checks to me. And on this card, I decide to check and the button decides to check as well. So that's a pretty good sign. But now I'm liking my hand a little bit more when the river is the four of diamonds. So you could say that somebody could have been trapping a flush on the turn. But I think that if the button had one, he would have bet once it went check, check to him. So now when the under the gun player is checking as well, I have to assume that I do have the best hand. So with that being said, I decided to put out a pretty small bet of $55. And they don't think about it for too long and they both fold. So I'm not really quite sure what they had. Maybe they just flopped um, bottom pair. We're trying to see if they can hit trips or two pair. But nonetheless, it's good to scoop up your first hand. So let's go and let's keep this momentum going. So we all love suited connectors, but I love them more when they have faces on them. We have Queen Jack of Diamonds under the gun. I raised it up to $15 and only get two calls from the small blind and big blind. So we are off three ways to a flop, which is queen jack six so we flop top two pair it's quite a beautiful feeling there is a hard flush draw out there but i decided to bet out for twenty dollars to start it off once they checked in me and they both called and the turn is an ace now this is an interesting card because normally this would hit me way more than when it hit them but at the same time king 10 is one draw that did get there which they could reasonably have in the small blind or big blind so when it gets to me I decided to do a check. Now, this does make me vulnerable to them getting there on with the flush, but it also does some pot control in case they do have me beat with King 10. And also, when I bet this clean river, it's going to make them call me down light if they do have like a small ace or maybe they have any other pair. So with all that being said, I check and we go to the river, which is a three of spade, not completing nothing else unless they had two four but if they have two four then so be it and they both checked to me and so now i gotta go for value i bet out for 35 not even that large and they both fold so do you think i should have bet the turn or do you think that turn check for pot control is okay let me know in the comments but we are moving on so here we have an extremely weirdly played hand so i um checked my option blind you know didn't even know what i had and I end up having pocket 10. So obviously I would have raised a lot if this would have been the case. Is that there were so many limps ahead of me. But we go off five ways to a flop of eight, six deuce with two hearts. I do have the 10 of hearts. So now I decide to just bet out for $10. And the button in the small blind decides to call. Now the turn is the seven of hearts. Bringing in a flush if somebody had one. And it ends up checking all the way around. The river is an offshoot three. And so now I think that I have the best hand and I want to go for some thin value. And I put out a bet of $15 just trying to target an eight. That's not two pair. And I do end up getting called by the button and I do lose, but not in the way that I think. You would think in a limp pot, I would probably lose to some type of two pair or maybe even a straight that was scared to raise. Um, but I actually lose to pocket queens. So... That was quite weird. I didn't expect to see that hand like that. I thought it was bad enough that I limped in pretty much with tens and then somebody else limped in with queens. But in low stakes, you see this kind of stuff all the time. But just wanted to include that. It wasn't like a huge pot or anything like that. It was just strange. 
All right, here's another interesting hand. So we have King Queen from the big blind and there's a plus one raise to $15 and it folds all the way around to me. And you could say I could be putting a three bet with this hand, but this play is pretty competent. So from an early under the gun raise, it's a lot of chances I could be dominated by let's say ace king or ace queen. So with all that being said, I decide to just call and that brings in the under the gun limper. So we're through ways to a flop, which comes king deuce deuce. About as drive a flop as you could ask for. There is two clubs on the board though, but I do have the queen of clubs if that ever does become relevant. So I check under the gun limper checks and the pre five razor decides to check as well. That's pretty interesting, but we were off to a turn, which is the seven of diamond. And so now I decide to bet out for $20 and they both call. The river is another deuce. So now we have a full house and I don't want to bet too large because this is a good chance that there's another king out there. And if they raise, I want to still be able to call. So I decided to put out a bet of 30 and weirdly enough, they both decide to call. And I am chopping with a pre five razor who actually had king queen as well. So we were going to be chopping no matter what the run out was. If we both got the showdown, I have no clue what the player in between had. Maybe he turned the seven and thought it was good since it went check on the flop. But nonetheless, Everyone loves a chop pot. And of course, I had to say the most famous quote in poker when you and somebody have the same hand. I can play that bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. So here we have the toughest hand of the night. We have pocket kings in the big blind. Beautiful hand. Second best hand ever made. So there's a late position raised by my boy Aiden. And the button decides to call as well. So when it gets to me... I could race pretty large, but I do want action with my premium hands, especially because it's a late open and just a late position call on the button. So I decided to raise it a little bit smaller than I normally would. I make it $65 and that $65 gets my boy Aiden and the big, the button, I'm sorry, to double flat. And so with that being said, we are going three ways to a flop, which is Jack 10 five with two diamonds. So at this point, I'm thinking about what's in the pot. The pot has about $200 in there. So I decided to go out for a half pot sizing of $100. And when it gets to my boy Aiden, who is next to act, he does this Hollywood. And I'm just thinking like, yo, he's going to tank and go all in. And this is going to suck. So he takes like 25 seconds. I actually watched the tape. He took 25 seconds and then he just rips it all in on me and the button snap fold. So now it's on me. So now I'm examining this board a little bit more. The Jack and the 10 are both diamonds. And so now he could have all of the combinations of Jack 10 suited besides Jack 10 of diamonds, obviously. He could have all of the Jacks and all of the 10s that would have raised pre-flop from late position and also call a three bet in position. So I'm really thinking about this hand. I look at my cards. I do not have the King of Diamonds. So I am unblocking him. He could have diamonds, but... The only reasonable diamonds he could have would be king queen of diamonds. I'm double blocking it, having two kings in my hand. So with all that being said, I'm trying to think what hands do I beat? The only hands I can actually come up with is pocket queens, maybe with the queen of diamonds. So there's a few combinations of queens that are out there. And there's more combinations of hands that I lose to. And in one three... Like I always say, when people are just trying to put piles of money into the pot, it's because they have a great hand. Um, if I haven't seen nobody that has like a spaz factor to them, then I just believe people whenever they're trying to put all of their tips up there. So I, it takes a long time and I'm thinking and I'm thinking and I actually do decide to lay down the kings on the flop. You can go ahead and fire me up because I'm not results oriented, but my live read was spot on because my boy Aiden did have top set of pocket jacks. It made perfect sense and it was a tough lay down. Um, when I told him I had pocket kings, he didn't believe me, but here is the footage. I thought a pocket kings to you, bro, but nice hand, nice hand. So let's on to the next one. That uh, was a big shot to my profit, but we got to battle back. So obviously that last hand sucked. Um, I was up about $100 before that hand and now I am down about 70. So it is what it is. But now we get pocket nines and we raise it up to 15 from middle position. The cutoff player decides to go all in. It's only for $32. So when it folds around to me, 
I decided to call. If somebody would have called the 32, I would have put in another raise for protection. But we're going heads up to a flop, which is six, three, seven, turn three, river three. So we do have a full house. He shows that he has a six. So he had a boat as well. Obviously, mine is a superior one. And so with that, we're uh, chipping up a little bit and we're getting close to being back at even. So let's see if we can get over that mark of $300. Yeah. So moving on along, we have a beautiful hand, King, Queen of Diamonds. And in middle position, I decided to raise it up to $15. The under the gun and big blind both decide to call. So going heads up to a flop, which comes Queen, nine, three with two clubs on the board. And this is a pretty wet and connected board. So when they checked to me, being that there's $45 in the pot, I started off with $20, about half pot sizing. And the big blind decides to call, um, I didn't like the situation already. For some reason, I felt like I was going to get check raised on the flop. But we're off to the turn, which is the ace. So only hand that does leapfrog me is if he had a ace high flush draw. You know, I've top here with a flush draw. And so on this card, when he checks to me, I do decide that this card is still better for me. So I decided to bet out for $40. And then he... Thinks about it for maybe five seconds and rips it all in. This is not a good spot. So I actually just snap fold and he shows that he had a suited ace just like I thought he had. Um, I don't know if the snap call was necessary, but I just knew that I was beat because I already th thought I was beat on the flop. So the turn check raise is always so much stronger than the flop raise. So at this point, there's no point in me tanking. I just get out of there and move on to the next hand. They kind of suck to lose a lot of money in that hand. But what are you going to do? I could have lost more if I would have called. So let's just move on to the next hand and see if we can find a better spot. All right. So this is a mid-session update. At this point in the session, I'm not really liking the situation of being down $50 after being here for so long. So I decided to open up my range, trying to uh, get into more pots. Basically, I'm just saying I'm playing worse hands, which is not what you should do. Um, you should try to stick to the game plan. But this is not what I decided to do. I'm opening up my range. So let's just get back to the felt and let's see how this works out for me. So a little bit of time goes by. I want a few hands, make about another $40. But we end up getting to this hand where we decide to raise 8, 10 suited to 15 under the gun. This is probably a fold from extreme early position, but I want to get some money in these pots. So I decided to raise the 15 and the cutoff button and small blind decide to call. So obviously not great. This hand works a lot better heads up. So we go off to a flop, which is seven jack 10 with two diamonds. And so I do have middle pair with a gut shot to the straight. And so I actually check once it gets checked to me and it gets to the cutoff who decides to bet off for $20. The button and I both decide to call and the turn is probably the worst card I can think of. Tell me, can you think of what it would be? If you guess the jack of diamonds, you are absolutely right. That means if somebody had a jack, they now have trips. And if somebody had a flush draw, which was probably more likely than they now got there. And so it checks all the way to the button now who decides to bet out for $35. And at this point, I could be drawing dead. So I decided to just fold this in. And the player does show it was my boy Aiden. He did have a jack. So, of course, it was a good fold, but it still sucks to lose money. And obviously, I shouldn't be playing 8-10 suited out of position. So, anyways, it's time to tighten up my range and time to play some more decent hands. So, I said I was going to play better hands, but here I am with 6-4 of clubs. And I do the worst thing. I just limp from the low jack and it limps to the cutoff who raises it up to $15. That then gets the button to call, and I know that the player in between the uh, cutoff and me is not going to squeeze, so I decide to call the $15 and the hijack calls as well. So we are going four ways to a flop, which is eight, six, four with two diamonds. So it's an extremely wet and connected board, but I decide to check it to the razor who decides to check it, and the button decides to put out a bet of $30. And now I'm looking at my stack. I think I have about $210 at this point. And so I want to make this look as bluffy as possible. Obviously, he could have a pair and a straight draw, pair straight and a flush draw. So at this point, there's going to be so many turn cards that I'm not going to like. 
So being as that just to look extremely bluffy, I decided to just put it all in. If he has a straight, then so be it, or a flush draw, then hey, we'll just see each other on the river. And it actually folds back to the button, and he actually does tank for quite a bit of time, and then he decides to give it up. Um, I am not mad at this decision at all. You know, there's a lot of hands where I would like to know the feedback about what y'all think. But I think with my stack def and with so many nasty cards and being out of position, this was probably the best option that I had. So you can still leave your comments and let me know. But I'm pretty confident this was the best move I had with my stack def. So we are pretty much back to even now, maybe a couple dollars short, but we still need to get over this threshold. So this is one of the final hands of the night. We have pocket queens in the hijack. So there's an early raise to $15 followed by a call. So when it gets to me, this is a mandatory three bet. And choosing my sizing, I decided to raise it up to $75. That is 4X the raise plus the call. That's pretty standard here. So when it gets back to the original raiser, he decides to shuffle his chips for a little while, shuffle his chips for a little while. And I'm just thinking, is he Hollywooding with aces to rip it all in? And at this point, I'm kind of not really wanting him to go all in, but he does go all in. So I'm not loving this spot. You know, four bet jams are pretty nutted in this game. And I'm looking at his stack and he only has about 200 total dollars. And I'm already in this pot for $75. So for $125 more, I can't fold. He could show me the aces and I still would have to call. So I do call and we are off to the flop, which is seven, six, deuce looking pretty good. But the turn is a king. So now ace, king, does leapfrog us. And the river is another deuce. So I do ask him if he has aces or kings and he says no. So I do turn over my hand, pocket queens, and he has pocket jack. So it was uh, not too bad of a decision for him to go all in because there's going to be over cards normally. So... It's the best for him just to get it all in. I can't fold for 70 big blinds or really only 40 more big blinds. So I guess the hand kind of played itself. I'm just glad that I was on the right end of that. So now we are in the profit view. We are up $200 on the session. But we do have one more hand to go over and that will be the final one. So in this hand, we have pocket tens, one of my favorite hands. So under the gun, I raised it up to $15. I get two calls and we are off three ways to a flop, which is very rare, but I have an overpair on an eight, six deuce board. So being as that I have an overpair and I have done some solver work, I can actually bet pretty close to pot here. And so I bet out a little bit more than I normally would. I bet out for $25. And unfortunately the player between me and the cutoff folds out of turn. And the $25 makes my boy Aiden think about it for a little while. And he does decide to fold. He said he had two over cards to my pocket tens. But nonetheless, we got the scoop in another $30. And that actually becomes pretty important. And this was our last hand of the session. So we were going to go to the outro and we were going to discuss the results of the session. I will catch you there. All right. So that is it for the video. Um, we, we ended up making a profit because of that Queens over Jack's hand. Um, it was like a saved by the bell kind of moment. I definitely appreciate y'all for getting to this point in the video. Once again, make sure that you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Like the video and comment on a few of the most interesting hands or whatever opinions you have on them. I appreciate everybody. So let's just go over the results. I was into the game for $300 and I was out of the game for $530. That is a profit of $230, but this time I was here for about five hours. So it's still over at $40 an hour mark. So not a bad session, man. And I look forward to the next video. But until then, holla.